This video contains representations of autism and discussions about heterosexual dating and sex. There are also romantic, dramatic spoilers, I guess, for Comey Can't Communicate, Scum's Wish, As the Moon So Beautiful, Toradora, and A Silent Voice. Scene, two high schoolers on their first date, both of them complete novices new to the experience. Awkward, of course, they dance back and forth with their emotions and their actions until a moment alone together in a ferris wheel gondola. She, not much of a talker, shares a piece of her fears and vulnerability with him. And he says back to her, What? For some of you, this is trivial. For approximately 90% of you, I bet you instinctively came up with a correct response. To me, this is quite literally the most difficult thing in the world. I've made no secret on this channel about my journeys on the autism spectrum in my life and how that's affected my relationship with fiction and, more broadly, my outlook on life. They say you shouldn't self-diagnose and self-analyze. That, to me, sounds like something someone who didn't sort their M&Ms by color before they turned two years old would say. I distinctly remember refusing to go into a convenience store to buy a pack of gum entirely because I would be forced to talk to the clerk. I went the entire year in fifth grade without speaking a word to anyone at school. You may now understand why I collect a particular manga. I have been diagnosed, by the way. Officially diagnosed in my podunk rural Delaware childhood town in 1999 with antisocial disorder because autism was what the kid who ate the cardboard insert out of his binders in class was. Not what the weird kid who knew that Dragonite had a base 134 attack stat or had memorized the entire script of the Matrix and would quote it inappropriately in conversations had. So excuse me if I don't wait six months and then pay $600 to get a badge that lets me wear my please be patient I have autism cap to conventions. I mask well enough in my personal and professional life that ASD hasn't held me back too severely, aside from multiple year-end reviews containing something along the lines of Clear and Sweet brings a brutal honesty vibe to the workplace that managers and coworkers don't really like. But this video isn't titled Clear and Sweet Can't Communicate but answered inbound phone calls for five years until he learned how to fake a conversation, though. It's about romance. My attempts at romance have been somewhere between pitiable and fodder for stand-up comedians. Scene. Girl invites you to her bedroom to help her study math. Makes very sure that you know she's not wearing underwear. And some five years later, you realize she always got perfect grades in math, and isn't that weird? Or this one. Talk to a girl online, shared interest, in-person date scheduled. A few days prior, she calls at 1 a.m. Doesn't have anything important or pressing to say. You tell her you have work in the morning. Does she need something from you? If not, we can chat later. She apologizes, hangs up the call, and ghosts you. Told that last one to my mother. It's okay, she's got two other neurotypical children to get grandchildren out of. Romance, in 2023, is a dating app scrolling through pictures of white women with their dogs and their love of wine and the outdoors. What is this for me? What am I to do with this? Lady, I'm teetotal, not fond of animals, and literally allergic to grass. My claim to fame is talking for hours about Chinese cartoons for perverts and how the perversion is intended, and it's art, you see? The effort required by a heterosexual man to initiate any type of relationship is astronomical and presents a really unattractive cost-benefit analysis. Considering we're like five years away from sex bots or full-dive VR holodeck porn anyway, this is likely a non-issue, and hey, I'll live. Still, I long for an assigned marriage or Futurama forced mating situation just to approach someone attractive. Do you have any interest in forming a romantic or sexual bond with me? No, no is fine. I can handle no, simple. We ain't too pretty, we ain't too proud. If that sounds like a one-line plot from The Big Bang Theory or an episode of Love on the Spectrum, well, yeah. 
canned laughter is about the amount of respect and legitimacy stupid autistic nerd gets. It seems far more efficient to me, but I suppose most people would rather engage in social activities. Fun story, did you know social is a code word for an excuse to drink? I learned that while researching for this video, looking into my local sports league. Here, look, look, look at this logo. Yeah, it's an anthropomorphic beer stein holding another beer stein for a sports league. Instead of making romance easy, society somehow expects me to climb aboard my ship, a dinghy rather, of social fluency and navigate the high seas of conversation, which is like crossing the Pacific in a lifeboat. And the tiger in the boat is named Autism. Just be natural. I need you all to understand that my natural is at best your creepy. At worst, it's unsettling and offensive. Like a tiger. Everything, every single social interaction I have that isn't about the themes of the magical girl genre or the damage calculation stat of a strategy game is not natural. It's a scripted, forced act. A play that I perform every time I talk for the benefit of the persons around me feeling comfortable. Do you know why the intro to all my videos is we need to talk about something interesting? Because I honestly, deeply, do not care about the pleasantries or the topics that I don't find meaningful. And unfortunately, that seems to be the barrier to forming a romantic relationship. I'm supposed to first engage casually, not scare her off like a frightened deer. I'm supposed to casually explore her interests and be funny and assertive, but not pushy or cringe and stare at her face, but not in a weird way, but also notice the body language. This is big. I learned recently that if people turn away, they don't want to talk to you and want you to go away. Write that down. Then I use one of my five social engagement examples on my masking cheats sheet. If the conversation veers from any of them significantly, she's going to realize real quick that I probably should be wearing my hat and asking for patience and that I clearly don't qualify as a potential mate material, despite the fact that I showered and got in shape and made a 16 and a half hour playlist talking in depth about the themes, directing, writing, symbols in Puella Magi Madoka. Magica, how did that not get me laid? This is why I respect the humanities more than hard sciences. Words and gestures are like a magic spell that you cast with infinite possibilities. With just that, you have the power to control and manipulate and affect other human beings. Like five of those billions and billions of possible combinations of syllables put together can lead to you having sex or meaningful emotional companionship. But 99.9% .9 of them lead to the person never wanting to see you again and wishing you just stop fucking talking about Terra Normal Extreme Speed Dragon Items 134 Attack Stats Stop the Ghost Meta Game Freak Bing Back Pursuit. So, for the people who weren't given the cheat sheet on how to navigate social situations and would like to learn, or those who missed out on any type of adolescent romance, there's probably a correlation or causation thing going on there, should it be any surprise that they may enjoy seeing how others navigate those completely unmapped seas? Sooner or later, you're going to realize, just as I did, there's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. I'll watch a social interaction like a chess match, a strategy game, a Pokemon battle. The girl is defensive. What does he say in this situation? Oh, bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. So 10 minutes into the video, I'd like to share you a few of my favorite romantic scenes and how the male protagonist handles the interaction and clinically dissect their response or what I took away from it. But if you want a larger discussion about social obligations and gender roles in our society and our media, well, send me a couple hundred dollars and I'll make it. We ain't too pretty. We ain't too proud. Scene. Kotaro shares a quiet moment alone with Akane. They are crushing on each other. 
Someone translated, I love you, into, isn't the moon beautiful? Was it Osamu Dazai or Sosuke Natsume? fail. Too passive. He is only saved by the girl doing it for him. She clearly wears the pants in this relationship. That's great. I'm into getting pegged by the hot track girl too, but we're looking at the onus of action here. At least he does notice when she says the metaphor. Alternative action. He could just say his dumb book nerd shit out loud. It would have likely have been construed as romantic, and it was something. Failing proactively is better than waiting on luck. Teachable moment, initiative. Scene. Shoko has just given Shoya a gift. He's about to leave when she stops him and says something. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. What's that? Something about these? Pretty, isn't it? Where are you going? Critique. She's deaf and she's talking. Deaf people don't usually talking on account of the whole never hearing thing. I learned this from Boji in one of my Japanese animes. This probably means what she's saying then is important. The visible shaking and gift also lead into this being really important. Let's pretend we don't know we're in a Naoko Yamada directed romance film and say the appropriate response when your hot friend who doesn't usually talk all that good starts visibly shaking and spouting loony shit about the moon is maybe to get close to her and make sure you address the emotions first. Either she's over the moon for you, or she needs a bit of soothing words in case she's a lunatic. That, that is the actual etym etymology of that word. Alternative action. I feel some physical touch might be the correct play here. Put the bike down and hug her. Teachable moment, context. Now can anyone use the ski to see the ski, please? I'm drowning in these metaphorical puns. Oh, here we go, here we go. Scene. Established s uh, teacher, um, a sex pest. Child groomer? <laughs> Whatever. Akane just spent the night with her too pure for this world colleague, Mr. Kanai. Um. Hmm? What's wrong? What's the problem? What did you mean when you said I didn't need to stop? Huh? What are you referring to? Uh, how do you not remember? Come on now, me being a slut and all. Oh. It's because you like it, right? So you don't have to stop. You make it sound like it's just some innocent hobby. Uh, do I not have it right? <sighs> You're right, I do it because I like it. But I'm asking you how... Uh, how does it make you feel? Hmm. Will you hate me if I don't get upset? I will. I see. But I... I love you. <gasps> Critique. The woman you're crushing on admits to slutting it up like a big old slut bag. And you counter with, joke's on you, I'm into that shit. Bold, brazen, kinky. Now she's on the back foot. Nine out of 10, polykill people, it's 2023. Chad Cuck grind set. Alternative action. There are no other options, only unrepentant, unconditional love. If there is anything else meaningful in this world, then I have several hundreds of hours of Magical Girl content that I need to go revise. Teachable moment, 
acceptance. Scene. On a beach trip, Ryuji finally gets his crush Minari alone, with no distractions. We're alone. Is this my chance? So, Kushieda, do you have a boyfriend? You know that seaweed ghost? You think it's still around somewhere? Huh? I wonder... Have you ever seen a ghost before? Me? Uh-uh. I never have. Well, me? I believe in ghosts. Even though I've never actually seen them before. And get this, I don't believe any of the people who say they've seen them. Huh. It's kind of like how I think about the concept of love. Like, I believe one day I'll fall in love, get married, and live happily ever after. Even though I've never actually fallen in love with anyone yet. You see what I'm saying? For some people, falling in love's like second nature. But I can't even relate to that. So if I've never experienced love before, is it real? And that makes me wonder if ghosts are real. I haven't seen one yet, so maybe they're not. See? Anyway, the answer to your question? I don't. Critique. Oh no, Ryuji, she used a metaphor to deflect the direct question. She is clearly much smarter than both of us and does not want to talk about the subject. Red flags. Ryuji instead wades into the metaphorical, metaphorical pool. He knows metaphorical kung fu. Alternative action. I would abandon ship and be awkward around her for the next 15 episodes or the rest of our lives. Maybe Ryuji had the better response, I don't know. Teachable moment? Equality. This is good data, this is emotionally affecting drama, and incredibly interesting, if not always optimal choices made by these guys, but can we put it to use? Let's take it all the way back. This motherfucker. Not her, don't look at her, she's not important right now. This paragon of conversational fluidity. This is the shit. Tadano Hitohito. Literally just a normal everyman. That's that's literally that's literally what the name means. He is absolute SSS tier El Gran Padre material. I understand he is to be a representation of a neurotypical person and is such not specifically trying to manipulate the conversation in that way and is more just relying on feeling or instinct. I think that's what they call it. That doesn't mean his actions aren't able to be read as giant signposts and examples of how someone should go about directing a conversation in a way that makes other people feel comfortable. His new girlfriend on the verge of tears in their Ferris wheel gondola, her fears of not being good enough. What ploy does the master play? I legit gasped when he said, we are the same. I would have gone with something so far more praise-based or inevitably cringe or a lot less compassionate, but his answer was like a thousand times better overall and for the outcome that he wants. It's brilliant. He took everything that we just learned and effortlessly put it together to find the one dialogue path among billions whereby his response was not cringe and did get him further in the relationship. I need you to believe me when I say that I genuinely wish I could do this. And I know this must come across as astoundingly off-putting, as if I'm some emotionally stunted, raging 14-year-old 4chan kid rejecting the status quo out of fear. And yeah, I'm kind of not far from that kid. Though nowadays my life is very comfortable, with good health, a steady income, my own house, and the freedoms and time to explore my passions, I'm still exceptionally lonely. Even as a grown adult, mentally, I'm still that weird kid I was 20 years ago, failing remedial high school socializing class. At the end of the day, trying to explain my thought process for how I navigate and cope in social situations to people who think fucking quote unquote normally, I cannot add enough vitriol to that word, always, always, always has left me immensely frustrated. Their advice, while I'm sure it's well-meaning, is so vapid and irrelevant to my experiences. It honestly just feels like they're caricatures of humans, or mocking me with platitudes. 
Just go out and meet people. Focus on yourself and it'll happen naturally. That's, that's probably the same as telling a depressed person just to smile more. Do you not realize that you're all playing this game of conversations with a cheat mode enabled? I'm making this video to say that all I've got is an incomplete game facts page from 2001 written in Spanish and 200 failed attempts. In my life, I've yet to find any tangible, actionable directives for creating relationships or achieving intimacy. I've been trying for 20 years now, studying and learning, practicing, dating apps in person and online to absolutely no success. In fact, to abject failure. I'm 34 going on 15, still mad at the world, fairly sure I'll die alone, so at least allow me my vicarious romances. Let me watch my genius avatar in Tadano and my other romance gurus. There's some small comfort in seeing them achieve what I likely never will. And that emotional catharsis, combined with the pastiche of masking and performing their behaviors in my real life, well, that's what constitutes my consumption of romance anime. And with that, class is over. I hope you learned something. If not something directly usable, then something helpful about understanding ASD, or maybe at least a bit about the modern Gen 9 Pokemon meta. Leave your experiences with ASD, your ideas on how you consume romance, or your best VGC teams in the comments. I'm also accepting Rumiko-centric fanfics, uh, bonus points if they're Manbagi x Comey. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.